stare with fierce eyes. I offer no explanation for my exceptional appearance. I resist culture exchange, proud to display religious attire. Why do you find me eccentric? I will offer no apologies for my perceived mysteriousness. My childhood was um, filled with a lot of moving around um, and a lot of uh, experience with different cultures. But it was filled also with, I guess, the energy it took me to kind of learn all the languages and fit into the culture, which makes me now understand these young girls. You know, from a very, very young age when we moved, I felt like I did not belong. Even when we lived in a Muslim country, you know, that's Saudi Arabia. I think the most profound years of my life was when I was in Somalia and I've always missed it. So my childhood is filled with not wanting to be in Cairo, not wanting to be in Riyadh, not wanting to be in, you know, Cyprus, wanting to be in Somalia and not being there. At your shores, I was not alone. Pride accompanied me. Nobility tagged along. No, I'm not equipped with fluency in your language to appease. Mine is rich and poetic. Would you crave an exchange? One of the challenges that's facing the community, the newcomer issues, you have newcomers who come here, let's say at the age of 15. These kids are coming from um, refugee camps in Kenya. They were probably born in those refugee camps and they probably grew up in those refugee camps and they've been there for 15 years without any education. Then they, are, they got lucky and they get to come to America. Well, the school system looks at them and says, okay, you're 15 years old, you're gonna go to the 10th grade. Well, how are you gonna put somebody who has not had any education, didn't even go to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, what have you, into the 10th grade? It takes years and years and years for that particular kid to catch up to the system and she might be in her mid-twenties when she's ready to go to college simply because it took that long for her to grasp what it's like the basics of education. Somali youth, like any other youth, is dealing with the, with the issues of peer pressure and all kinds of violence, drugs, and whatever have you that confronts um, any youth groups in America today. But on top of that, like any other immigrant community, our kids are dealing with two worlds. You know, one of two cultures that are so different. When they're at school, there's somebody else, and when they're at home, there's somebody else. It's like when they're at school, they have to blend in, and when they're at home, they have to like, yeah, they're just themselves. They don't act the same when they're at school and when they're at home. It's, it's a very challenging position to be in, especially in this day and age when um, so much backlash is against being a Muslim. Well, certain people think that all Muslims bomb people, you know? So they think we're terrorists. We got under bombs under our skirts and stuff, you know? You do? I never heard of that. No. Yeah, that's what they, they, they use prejudice comments like that. It's like, you got bomb under your skirt. <laughs> I've experienced racism by people about my scarf. Oh, they say you wear that scarf because you're bald. You wear that scarf because you're uh, like, that, what does it represent and stuff. So I'd be telling people like, oh, just because I wear a scarf doesn't make me bald. Just because I cover myself doesn't make me that people don't want to love me, you know? Do not allow mere facade to divide us. My culture and traditions are bequeathed. I hail from the land of song, poem, and proverb, the land of punt and mirror, onsi and adar. I am a reluctant refugee. I had no hand in this. I prefer my natural state, my homeland, where I was not demeaned, tarnished, where my presence demanded respect. In exile, I yearn for everyone, for revere, even though I see you oppose. I'd like to talk to you about these young women. These young women standing before you are powerful. They're part of the Emerging Leaders Program. The Emerging Leaders Program empowers young Somali women to become the leaders of tomorrow by teaching leadership skills and honing inherent leadership qualities. On my side, you see some of our emerging leaders. Here is Najma, and here is Hafsa, and they're both poets, and today they read po poems for us. They're both very, very smart girls. 
and I know in four or five years we're gonna see these girls finish their education and in about 10 years these are our next generation these are the leaders of America and Somalia they have so much energy vitality and raw talent but there are many barriers that are put up in front of these young women in today's world today we're realizing our culture is beautiful and these young women are experiencing that and that's why we're here and so watch out for Somali women and when you do see a Somali woman with her hijab in the middle of America somewhere Minnesota San Francisco Los Angeles San Diego Chicago New York don't look at her and say she's oppressed because inside of that hijab exists a resilient strong strong woman and I'm free free to express myself free to take control free to be a leader and lead on I'm proud to be a Muslim Somali female, and nobody, I mean nobody, can change that. It's important to do this work because we really want to show a side of ourselves that has not been seen before in America. In America, the media likes to lump us up as Muslim women who are marginalized, who are oppressed, who, who are wearing the garb because they're forced. We're not forced. We're not marginalized. We're not oppressed. We are free. We are independent. And you know what I found out? Somali women are more free than Western women. Why? Why are your parts naked? Why are you so ready to submit to please? Oh, what was it that you called it? Oh yes, you are a freed woman. People need to know how to embrace and balance both cultures. Just saying that you, you have freedom to do what you want, but at the same time, don't forget your culture. You just need to um, defy the culture of pressure and media and you know to look a certain way and specifically for the girls stop the gossip stop you know encouraging each other to fight please do not do not um, contribute to the divide of girls because there's so much violence girl to girl violence you know you're a leader when you you know when you stand up for who you are and you don't let anybody affect your identity and, and, and kind of introduce things to you that that's not you because she has so many challenges, she has to be strong. And so therefore, she stays true to her culture, she stays true to her people, and she stays true to what's her. Resilience, my woman. <laughs> I feed hungry bellies and feeble bodies, nourish souls where happy spirits vacated. Let your eyes rest on mine, you will find me courageous. As you draw closer, you will find me human. Culture, distinction, and all. Be in awe of me. I am a refugee with dignity.